Good day, Great Twelves. My name is Kadian Mazukere. I'm the author and publisher of the Distinction Bound Student Textbooks, and I've written Economics Grade 10, 11, and 12, and I've published Business Studies Grade 12 and 11. Uh, this is one of my books, the complete version. Uh, some know it as the Five Rent Book. So you see, like, uh, this is the complete version. This is the No Answers version. So mostly the No Answers version teachers buy for learners and the complete version they buy for uh, for themselves. If you see the thickness is different and it's because the other one has answers, the other one doesn't have. So the No Answers version is 200, the complete version is 250. And uh, I have other material that you can get on the internet. Uh, this is one of them, the question bank. I have a mini workbook. I also have um, one with some essays in it and uh, if you want it you can let me know I'll see what I can do right uh, moving on to the lesson the lesson for today is monopoly we want to show in a graph how a monopoly can make an economic loss uh, obviously this is what in the short run uh, because we say a monopoly will make an economic profit in the long run all right, so to jump into the lesson, um, first I want to show, because uh, I did some graphs on perfect competition and the demand curve is horizontal. Now, today we want to see the kind of demand curve that a monopoly faces. So with that, I'm going to show you, I'm showing you here a table. Now from this table, we want to construct um, uh, two curves three curves actually we want to see how the demand curve slopes We want to see how the marginal revenue curve slopes. We want to see how the average revenue curve slopes So we have all the information in this table. So if you can see from the table we have quantity from uh, zero to nine Then we have price we have total revenue. We are not going to show total revenue in this case uh uh, there is no need for me to show that and then we are but we are going to show average revenue curve We are going to show the marginal revenue curve. We want to see how they come about Like for us to say the demand curve for a perfect competitor is horizontal That video I didn't do yet, but I'm going to do it But it will be almost similar to this one that I'm doing here But the graphs are different like not the graphs the demand curves are different the marginal revenue curve is different. The average revenue curve is different. But in this case, let's see. This one will look similar to uh, monopolistic. The only difference there would be elasticity. Like uh, the one for monopolistic is more elastic and the one for monopoly is less elastic. And basically it's because uh, the product that a monopoly sells is unique. So there are not so many close substitutes to electricity, for example. Right, so to get started, let's look at unit one. So unit one, uh, we see that the price is 20. So I put a dot there. Uh, so when a monopolist sells the second unit, unlike a perfect competitor who sells all units at the same price, like because they're a price taker, they cannot sell uh what can i say they cannot sell for any other price other than the market price but the the, the monopolist a monopolist will uh, as output increases price decreases because the his demand curve represents the entire industry unlike the demand curve for a perfect competitor which is just a little fraction of the entire industry so as you can see here, the demand, the, like as, as output goes up, like from one to two, uh, the price drops from 20 to 18. Let's see the third unit, we go down to 16. The fourth unit, we go down to, as you can see, we are going down each time quantity in, increases, price decreases. So this is basically a demand curve that we are used to. Uh, one which is what downward sloping as you can see so there we have our demand curve and it's uh, it goes down like that uh, basically I'm taking the, the the figures in the graph not in the graph in the table and then I'm constructing a, a what 
uh, a, a demand curve using that and uh, I'm doing it step by step for you to see oh okay basically that's how it looks and that's how it should look now let's look at the next curve the next curve I'm going to show you here is the marginal revenue no 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 let me start with the average revenue curve now with the average revenue curve let's have a look do you see something there uh, when 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 um, when price is 20 AR is 20 when um, price drops to 18 AR is also 18 so these two are equal uh, just uh, just like a monopoly no 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 just like a perfect competitor and the reason if you look at the formula for calculating uh, AR uh, we say T no 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 we say uh, TR divided by quantity yes that's true so if we say 20 times 2 or it, it gives us 40 divided by 2 it gives us 20 uh, the first unit it's 20 rent and quantity is 1 and then that 20 divided by 1 it gives us what it gives us uh, 20 so that's why and when we go to the second unit the second unit is 18 and that 18 times 2 gives us 36 and that 36 divided by 2 it gives it takes us back to 18 and when we go to the third unit the third unit is 16 rand 16 times 3 it gives us 48 and that 48 divided by 3 takes us back to 16 so do you see that price and ar are equal in this case so we can conclude and say d is equal to ar uh, i see uh, please that's a mistake there it says mr it's a mistake i'm not going to fix it but i'm saying it right now uh it's a r d is equal to a r um maybe let me do it manually here i'm going to cancel this m and then i'm going to replace it with an a okay i'll do it like that so d is equal to a r the next graph oh no no not graph the next curve that i'm going to draw is um let me see the marginal revenue curve okay so with the marginal revenue curve uh because of the formula of calculating mr because we need to know what mr is is the money you get for selling one additional unit the money you get for selling one additional unit so let's see how it the formula is change in tr divided by change in quantity so let's see uh, our total revenue is what at the first unit our total revenue is uh, 20 and uh, the total revenue has changed from the revenue prior to that which is zero so at zero units total revenue is zero at the first unit total revenue goes changes by 20 so change in total revenue from zero to to 20 it's 20 so we'd say 20 <coughs> excuse me 20 divided by change in uh, quantity quantity changes from 0 to 1 so in that case it changes by one unit so if it does then we say 20 divided by 1 so that's why uh, marginal revenue is 20 do you see something there price is 20 which is D AR is 20 marginal revenue is 20 so these three are equal not really let's go on at this point in time yes they are and they'll only be equal once in the at the first unit now when we go to the second unit what happens is price goes down so since price goes down uh the the price is no longer 20 so if the price becomes 20 instead of total revenue going to 40 which would in case of a perfect competitor because the price remains constant as output goes up so since it's not the case uh, for, for a monopoly, price is going to go down to 18. So 18 times 2, that's 36. Now, total revenue has now changed from 20 to 36. So it did not change by, by, by uh, 18, just like uh, what we see for the second unit for price, for the second unit for AR because price and AR go to 18 uh, but but then marginal revenue goes to 16 because 18 times 2 is 36 
and then 36 minus 20 it's 16 then 16 divided by 1 there I'm using the formula change in uh, TR divided by change in Q change in quantity so it gets it becomes 16 when we go to <coughs> when we go to unit number three uh, our price is now 16 and 16 times 3 that's 48 and then 48 minus 36 it gives us what 16 is it so no it gives us 12 so total revenue now has changed by 12 so we divide that by 1 since quantity changed from 2 to 3 I hope you're not confused this is too easy for you to get confused all right moving on uh, so so just to show you it will look like this so here it will be our 16 and there we have 12 there we have 8 uh, I think you can see those dots moving and then we have 4 then we have 0 and then I didn't go uh, to the negatives but you see my uh, graph my, my curve is going to go beyond that zero and do you see my marginal revenue goes below it's now in the negatives because of space uh, because I wanted to show the table and the graph on one slide um, I didn't but but basically the point has been put across here so now because our D and AR are equal and they are not equal to our marginal revenue curve and that's why they split and uh, you can see it in this graph so now I'm going to move now to the graph that I want to explain but first and foremost I wanted you to understand why D and A R are equal and then M R is not equal to them so basically I think you understand if you don't comment section down below so let's let's go now to uh, a clean graph so this I've explained D is equal to a R and then we have marginal revenue so just like a perfect competitor something that I've been saying all this time um, an individual in a perfectly competitive market is a price taker so they cannot make decisions in as far as price is concerned however we say they have a decision to make and that decision is what uh, how many units should I produce and we said they produce at a profit maximizing output now the same applies to a monopoly uh, okay not the whole statement part of the statement the statement that doesn't go along with what I said earlier is price related a, a monopoly is a price maker so a monopoly is not going to take a price from anyone because they are the only ones selling that particular product so since that's the case uh, a monopoly will be a price maker now the other decision that a monopoly can make is uh, a decision based on what on on output and they apply the same rule the same profit maximizing rule that's why I did a video if you can check on the same playlist the first video says um, graphs graph rules explained something like that but check out the first video on this particular playlist uh, playlist that I have there for I, I think I called it graphs 101 so here in this whole playlist I'm explaining graphs and uh, I realized that it's better that I start with the rules so I've done that video already go back to the first slide the first video on this playlist right without wasting time so the the, the rule applies and the rule says uh, in order for a firm to maximize its profits, it has to produce at a point where marginal revenue is equal to marginal cost. So what do we have here? We have a marginal revenue curve in that color. I don't know what color that is. <laughs> Maroon, whatever. Right there we have our marginal cost curve and you see clearly where they intersect at point E. Again, point E does not represent equilibrium in this case. It's the profit maximizing point and it's one of the most common questions that you are going to come across They'll keep asking you identify the profit maximizing point. They will have many points and e will, uh, One of them will be a point where MC intersects MR. So in this case point E is our profit maximizing point Now what does that point do now that point 
is going to determine the quantity that should be produced by the monopoly. Now, uh, let me get my pointer here. What then happens is, after you get the quantity, I, if I was in class right now, and I would, I would ask a learner to come up front, and I would ask that learner to show us now the price, and trust me, nine times out of 10, they come and from this E here, they go to the left. They tell me that the price is here. You see? And then I'll ask other learners, is that, is that correct? They'll all say, yes, it's correct. Nine times out of 10, which is wrong because marginal revenue has nothing to do with the price. Go back to the first table that where we started, if you thought the price was there, price is determined by demand. So the demand curve is the one that gives us the market price. Go back to the table that I showed you in the beginning of this lesson. You'll see that, uh, oh yeah, it's demand actually that determines the price. So I'm going to proceed then. You continue straight up. Don't be uh, attempted to follow the MC, the way, way it's going uh, there. Just proceed straight up and, and don't stop until you touch the demand curve. Once you touch the demand curve, then now you have the price. So in this case, our price is 10. Now then the question is, is this monopoly making a profit or a loss? Well, if you know the answer to that question, then you don't know the answer because there is no, I don't know the answer myself uh, because there is nothing that gives us the answer. Something is missing. You cannot be, uh, remember the first video. One of the rules or one of the things I mentioned in that video is that when it comes to profit or loss, we uh, use two curves and the first curve is AR, average revenue. Now, the second curve, curve is AC, average cost. You compare the two. If AR is greater than AC, it's an economic profit. If AR is equal to AC, it's a normal profit. If AR is less than AC, it's an economic loss. So it's as simple as that. So here I'm asking you, is the firm making a profit or loss? And if you had the answer in your head, then you don't know the answer. The answer is we don't know. None of us knows. If you know, then you don't know. Right, so let's get to know now by introducing the AC. Where the AC is tells us the type of profit. If it's high, it's a loss. If they are equal, it's a normal profit. If the cost is low it's an economic profit let's find out you see in this case the the cost is way too high well let me not say way too high it's high it's up there so if our cost is high then we are making an economic loss because our cost is higher than our revenue now with that in mind look at the shape of our ac you see it's u-shaped and then beyond the fact that it's u-shaped um look where the ac cuts the what the, the the mc the no 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 not where the ac cuts the mc let me say where the mc cuts the ac the mc or the marginal cost curve cuts the ac the average cost curve at its lowest point what does that mean look here ac is high now it's going down it's going down now it's at its lowest where ac is at its lowest marginal cost cuts it right there so now what is our cost well our costs will be determined by us proceeding with our line and we proceed straight so we proceed straight up until we touch the ac so in other words our cost on average does is not constant is determined by output so like what i mean is let's say on the sixth unit cost is high on the seventh unit cost declines on the ninth but we don't care about all those units because we are not producing six we are not producing eight we are producing and why are we not producing six or eight or nine
Because if we do so, we, we won't be able to maximize our profits. So we have to uh, produce at a profit maximizing point. In this case, that point is 10. So we have to produce 10 units in order for us to maximize our profits. So with that in mind, our, the, 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 the cost at 10 units on average is 15. So this firm is making what? An economic loss. But now we have a way to find out if that's true. So we do it by simply saying AR minus AC as always. So let's have the, our AR is 10. Why do we say 10? And you see here, I kept the colors matching. Right, so here's our average revenue here. And if we look at this curve, it's 10, like that. So that's where we're getting that 10 from. We subtract it from our AC. Here's our AC curve. And our AC at 10 units, it's 15, as you can see right there. So if we say 10 minus 15, we get negative 5. So negative 5 doesn't need uh, rocket science for you to understand. Uh, negative 5 tells us the type of profit here. It's an economic loss. And uh, it being an economic loss, AR is less than AC. There we have it proved. Well, this has brought us to the end of the lesson. And um, thank you so much for tuning in. Um, I, I always, as always, I encourage you to subscribe to the channel and uh, share this video with everyone else that you can share it with. Thank you so much. God bless.